Hello. Okay, my name is Bonnie and uh, this is member highlight series where we're interviewing uh, some of our top developers from Angular Nation. And uh, we just started this. So today we're interviewing Rares Golea. How are you, Rares? Hi, Bonnie. I'm, I'm really uh, grateful for the invitation. Thank you very much for having me. You're welcome. So I, I, I pinged you and asked you to do this interview because I've gotten to know you a little bit on Angular Nation and I just think that you've really had so much to offer the community. And I think more people should know who you are because I think you're awesome. So I'm just going to ask you some questions and uh, super casual. And uh, uh, yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, let's start out. Will you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, so my name is Radish. Uh, I'm about uh, to be 30 years old. I am from a country called Romania. Uh, most of you might know it like the place where Dracula comes from. He doesn't exist, by the way. Uh, I know it's a place I where can... Carmen Popovicu comes from. <laughs> yeah, and I came to Spain like about 20 years ago uh, with my family. And I've been uh, an Angular developer since AngularJS version 0.8 so wow that's old school cool yeah <laughs> and you work with your brother is your brother there next to you no he's not he's not around right now he's got um, a, he's he's got a brother named vlad that sits right next to him and he's really nice yeah he's a designer yeah. so i do i usually do the angular part and he brings the 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 cool design features that's awesome Okay, so uh, so let's start out. Uh, did you ever think there was a moment when you were not cut out to be a developer? I asked this question because I went through this when I first started. Did you ever go through that? Is that like a normal thing? Yeah, so um, when I started out, I started, um, I, I entered the uh, college to be uh, an architect, uh, like a like building buildings? architect. Yeah, um, and I, I also did the uh, building engineering, uh, which I haven't finished because, um, you know, I, I fell too much in love with with uh, JavaScript and Angular and stuff. But um, I got into that college because, you know, my, my family comes from a construction background. So I thought, you know, my future is solved. Um, and I really didn't think I could enter the the tech world, I didn't have any clients. It, it wasn't really cut out for me. And um, I had like a really hard time about five years, uh, which I only managed to um, learn. And I was like, maybe this isn't cut out for me because it's been five years. I haven't had any clients, so I might as well uh, just go full in uh, construction work. Yeah. So. But here um, you are. So what happened? So but you're not a construction uh, worker. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm not a construction worker. So I I, I did like um, development. I did it like a hobby. I did it like more than ten hours a day, which wasn't like a, really a hobby. It was more like my main thing. Um, and my girlfriend at the time, which is now my wife and was always telling me, you know, this is like construction is not cut out for you. You, you need to pursue something else. Um, and I had like a really, really tough moment there for a while. Cause, um, my dad was like, well, what do you want to do? Well, I don't know. Well, pick something and we, it, Remember, this was back in the recession, so uh, I was like uh, living for free at my parents' house, and I, I wasn't doing good either in school or with programming. So, uh, yeah, then came in a job offer. I took it, and about seven years later, I, here we are. That's awesome. You just got to have that first big break, man. Yeah. Okay, speaking of the first big break, was there, a, was there a specific person that you feel like really helped you in a significant way that really made a difference? I mean, it could be something small, but was there somebody that came along that, that really sticks out in your mind that made a difference for you? Yeah, so uh, there are three people, not just one. Uh, there's my wife, obvi obviously. 
my mom, which uh, has been very supportive of me, uh, even though I did not have my future very clear. And my dad, who um, accepted it in, in the end, because at first he wasn't really accepting uh, the fact that I was, I was going to leave college and school. Uh, but he really wanted me to do well, so he pushed me very hard to be like the best version I can be uh, for the, the job I took. So he was always pushing me for quality, for trying to be better than anything I, I have seen up until that moment. So, yeah. That's so great. That's a very good thing to teach your kids. I taught my kids and they did not like it at all for a while, but now they're grown up and they're very hardworking and I'm super proud of them. And I'm sure that your parents are super proud of you. Uh, okay. So, uh, what was the next question? Uh, what do you listen to when you code? Do you have a playlist? Do you have like anything that you particularly? So I do two things when I, when I code just to keep my focus on the coding part. I either watch series on my secondary screen, uh, which, you know, people say, well, how can you focus? Well, I only listen to the content. I, I've watched Game of Thrones without knowing any of the characters. I do not know how they look. Um, I've listened to Game of Thrones, if you want to say so. Either that or I uh, go into the latest hits on items and I go from there. I don't really like to put too much uh, rhythm on the music because I get thrown out. Uh, I, I don't get that much focus, so I try to stay with the chill side of them. The See, Game of Thrones would mess me up. I would be like all, I would be super distracted. I don't know how you could do that. I, I would not, that would not work yeah. for me. I would be so <laughs> caught up in the storyline, I think. Um, okay, so that's another good question. So how do you, uh, how do you, do, do you have anything that helps you focus? Do you ever have a hard time focusing? I, I've struggled with this. Um, and I'm just curious if you have any like tips for yeah, so what what works for me clearly won't work for everyone. So uh, I'm really uh, an energetic type of person, like not physically. I, I do manifest myself as slow and, and stuff, but my my mind races a lot of times. So I have to um, I, I get distracted very easily with with everything. So what I used to do before was um, um, I, I used to tire myself a bit. So uh, if I had to start my work at 9, I would get up at like 6 a.m. So I would get that first uh, energy part out of the way because whenever I was fully energetic, I wouldn't focus on the code. And secondly, I would try to um, pick my tasks uh, in order of interest. So I wouldn't exactly do them in the order that um, my clients or my bosses wanted me to do them. I would go through them, especially in the morning, I would go through them in, in uh, an order of interest. So if something stand out to me, like whenever service workers com came out, I was like, okay, I'm going to do service workers. Yeah, but we haven't finished. No, I'm going to do service workers now first thing in the morning. So yeah, that's, that's one, one way I, I cope with it. That's really interesting. It's interesting how different people have different personalities because I, I have a, a I, I'm probably the, I don't know if I'm the opposite, but I really like like first thing in the morning, uh, doing the most difficult thing first thing in the morning. And then like, I want it to be easier and easier as the day goes on because I get tired and I don't focus. I'm like the opposite of you because I think I focus. It's harder for me to focus when I'm tired and it's easier for me to focus when I just wake up. Yeah. It's the, interesting. the thing is that I, I try to focus on stuff that really interests me. So even though they might be very difficult, um, I go through that because it interests me so I can manage to focus my, my energy on that particular thing and then yeah after a while then i can go in whatever order and i do like challenges so i yeah going through the hard stuff at first might be also the way i would go 
I have another trick that is uh, uh, because I sometimes I especially if it's something that I really don't like or something that's tedious or something that's hard. I don't really know how to do it. And I I struggle with those, um, especially when I was first learning. And that's really when I had a hard time focusing. And I think sometimes the days would get really long and it's three o'clock in the afternoon and I'm just like dying and I'm not getting any work done. Right. And I think uh, Pomodoro's for me are very helpful. I just like set a timer for 25 minutes and I get up and go. But then also uh, taking a break can't focus you got to get yeah. up and take a break that was really hard for me to learn okay so uh speaking of learning so you said you've been working with angular since what like 1.2 1. 1.3 1. like since it first 0. Came 0.8 out. yeah before wow. it came out before yeah. wow we should have been friends way back then we could have been helping each other yeah <laughs> what is your uh what is your favorite kind of because there's a lot of kind of niches in the angular uh ecosystem what's your favorite do you have favorites like what do you like working on mm -hmm. Yeah, well, um, I like working on GraphQL with, with Apollo. I like working on NX workspaces. I really love that, like, all my code in one single repository, and I don't have to have 10 repositories for my projects. No, right. I just one for, for everything. I can reuse my functions, so that's, that's another great feature. And I like Ionic and Capacitor. Uh, very very much because the uh, capacitor gives you a, a base that you can work on to to have the same apis for native on the browser on the mobile phone so i really love that that aspect that you write once and code for every everything and ionic i like it very much uh, because of uh, how easy it is to like make a small app in and, and it's so close. Components. I really liked it because uh, in Angular 1, Ionic and Angular, like Ionic was built with Angular, but it was really when they came out with version 2 that the Ionic team and the Angular team started actually collaborating. And that yeah. was when like the second, when the second version came out and they actually started working together that it was so beautiful. And it's so e like if you're already an Angular <laughs> developer and then picking up Ionic is just, it's so similar. And also, yeah. I always love the docs because you can scroll like right there and you see in like how it's going to look on the phone. It's really yes. Yeah. Nice. I, I feel for me is like the best version might have been starting with version four because it was platform agnostic. So mm -hmm. people that were previously using React uh, or Vue, which, which were asking me, well, well, how do you approach this? I was like, you know, look at Ionic. Um, yeah, but isn't it for Angular? No, no, it's it's platform agnostic. You can work with whatever framework you want. So yeah, I I, I love that uh, it's separated and it's not built really in Angular because there was there were some dependency issues back then where you couldn't install the late, latest version of Angular. Uh, with the latest version of Ionic or vice versa. So, yeah. Well, I'm glad they got that all worked out. Okay. Uh, so we talked about what you like. What do you struggle with? What's hard for you? It doesn't oh. mean programming or, or personal or anything. What is, what is you, what's your... Yes. So I have two, two things that I struggle with the most. Uh, first one is design. So I have the... Good Cut luck. your brother. That I... That's cheating, Raris. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He does. If if I mess up, if they give me like a task for HTML, CSS, I just tell him, okay, do it from my computer. You will be me for the next hour or so. You'll do it way faster because you'll do it in an hour. I'll do it in five. So yeah, HTML, CSS, I'm really bad at it. That <laughs> That's why I use all these frameworks to to put my content together. And secondly, what I find that I struggle the most with is maybe unit tests, testing, uh, just because um, I've been working with clients that want their product out like right now, fast, and there was no time for testing. There was like, just throw it out there, just finish it. Um, let's get to the next step so yeah that that part for me is like a, a, a deficiency so, sort of speak. i think that i think the the for me 
unit testing is always a choice for whoever's paying for the work. And I always ask the clients, like, do you want unit testing or not? Because it does take more time and it does cost more money and it needs to be in the budget. And some clients just say, I don't care about unit testing. But I mean, I, I think it is valuable and I really believe in yeah, unit testing. Me, but I also too, don't. But since, but since I've been working uh, with, with uh, mostly startups, they, they just prefer not to because of the cost increase and, and everything. So I, I feel really bad because they, they could have like the, the project way more stable. Um, I feel like that's it's standing on, it's a chair standing on only three feet, which it can stand, but four feet, uh, yeah, it, it can stand better. But you know, um, they, they're the one choose the ones choosing. So I, I, yeah, I end up struggling with that the most. Have you seen Shai Resnick? Yeah. I love his content. Uh, uh, he has I see his tutorials. He has a comprehensive testing course that like covers all of, I think almost all of, he would, he would tell me not to say all of, um, but he has a pretty yeah. con comprehensive testing course. Somebody asked me why I wasn't covering unit testing in my architect course. And I was like, because shy is hilarious and you should just go he talk to him about unit well. testing. He's great. Yeah, you, he's you such should, a good teacher. You should try to talk to him into doing a course on Angular Nation. Yeah, I did. I did. But he has been building high res IO for a couple of years and it's a really good platform. Um, so he's kind of already got his thing that he's been working on for a long time and he's pretty happy with it. But yeah, I would totally I love shy. I think he's a great teacher. He's really cool. Okay, so uh, we we talked about what you struggle with. Uh, what would you say? Like if you if you could tell me like the best dream job or like dream like team culture what what do you think would make you the happiest as far as like an employer is concerned so first of all i always try to um pick uh, the people i work with uh, based on um the challenge that the project is um because if i i see a project that i really like i i, I don't care I go through it, but I've been struggling with people that maybe think uh, too much about themselves and get into areas that they might not be experts in. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I would love to see a team that would go focus on one thing, each person on one thing, uh, ask for directions. Uh, the, the client should say, you know, we should go like through this path. And each and every one of us should bring to the table the best uh, possible um, st stuff they can come up with. Uh, I love learning from my coworkers. I love learning stuff. Um, it, it's my main thing. Uh, I, I work like uh, my main hours and then spend my evenings uh, reading code from uh, other people and reading stuff that maybe it's not in my area of expertise. Like um, I go through Node.js servers, I go through uh, PHP servers, I go through Docker. I, I just want to know what's behind that thing that my coworker did. I won't be an expert, but if he asks, asks me, well, you know, um, that's something you can look at. I always say, uh... When I was younger, I had, I felt a lot more confidence if I was kind of the most experienced developer on the team, then I felt like I had a lot of job security. But then um, the problem is that when I was on teams like that, where I'm like the most experienced or senior person on the team, and then I really would get bored. Like I'm just, you know, uh, I'm not learning, I'm not growing. But when I was on a team where I'm like the junior person on the team and I'm working with people that are super intimidating for me, it was very hard for my like self-esteem, but it was really good for my career because those are the those are the teams really where I learned so much and it made me a better developer. But I always felt like the little kid with all the big kids, you know, so I think it's 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 like a uh, it's if you're the, the top guy on the totem pole, then you're you have job security, but you're not learning as much. And if you're the bottom guy on the totem pole, then you're learning so much more, even though. Yeah. So it's a good balance. So what you're saying is you like being on a team with like 
really yeah, smart exactly. people that you can I, learn from. I, I had I this, this uh, friend one, uh, and I he's still my friend. It's not that we we had a fight or anything, but uh, he was like my mentor into the uh, my first job, mm-hmm. and. He was like write, writing Angular code really fast, and um, like thirty minutes for him was like three hours for me. I, I was just standing there trying to decode his code, um, and uh, yeah, I feel like it, from my all my uh, different clients and and jobs, I feel like that was the one that I learned the most and I had the most fun with Aww. because I I could learn so much. Tell us his name. Yeah, so his name is Andrea Leku. Uh, okay. That's his uh, Shout GitHub. Shout out to Andrea. Uh, Andre. It's Andre, Andre. Aleku. Yeah, he is. Right. Uh, he was a mainta- maintainer on Deployed, a, a framework that's now deprecated. We we met through there. So awesome. yeah. Awesome. All right. Okay. Last question. Uh, what are you working on now? What are you up to? Where can people find you? Um, so um, right now I, I'm working for a client, um, which I cannot discuss uh, too, too much about. And um, half of my time I spend it there. Uh, my other half of, uh, uh, the other half of my time I spend it uh, trying to uh, make content in Spanish for Angular. Uh, I've, I've recently became a host on Angular and Espanol on Angular Nation. I'm streaming. And this is a free um, channel. Yeah. So I think I'm going to put, I, I'm going to post these probably on YouTube, um, or Twitter. So, if, so if you're not on Angular Nation, go to Angular Nation. Angular Nation. And, Nation. but all the people who are joining, like we have people who are clicking, there's actually a live person that clicks every time you go to join. So it takes less than 24 hours. So just be patient, put in your email address, you'll get an invitation. And then you go to channels and find the Angular and Espanol channel, which is free. And there you'll find Rares, who is yeah, uh, the host. Yeah, I'm a host there. Uh, you can also find me on Twitter. Um, you have my nickname on screen. Uh, also, my GitHub, everything is under that nickname, so it's easy for everyone to just follow me. Um, yeah, and I'm doing uh, live streams every Sunday night at 7 p.m. Uh, what's it? Spanish time? I'm not sure what, what time zone is that. Uh, but I'm doing it every Sunday at 7 p.m. We're doing a live stream. We're trying to code an app from zero. Uh, so yeah, I, I look forward to to see you there if you want if you want to. Awesome! Thank you so much. This was super fun. Uh, Thank it was you, very man. good getting to know you, and uh, I've I've really enjoyed getting to know you around Angular Nation. And I am very excited about your Angular and Espanol channel and the content that you're doing because uh, I've, I I'm from Houston, right? So I heard a lot of people that are learning Angular and learning English at the same time. And it's really hard to find good tutorials in other languages. So I am, I'm very excited about what you're working on and I can't wait to see what you do next. Yeah, I'm also preparing, because I forgot, I'm also preparing tutorials for um, posting online. So follow me if you want to see yes. that. Thank you so much. It was really good talking to you. And uh, that's it for Rares Galea. Thank you. Thank Bye-bye. you very much, Bonnie. Bye.